Um, yeah, I would love any uh, feedback that you guys have, as well as uh, discussions for future work if you guys are interested. OK, so, uh, so how do we get AI agents to do what we want? Uh, so let's say that we want a robot to clean up this room. Now, this is quite a complicated task. For instance, the robot would need to reason about, let's say, which is the correct box to house some of the stray Lego blocks on the desk, or even whether to take some of these structures apart. So for instance, maybe it should disassemble those smaller structures in front, but it should probably leave that larger structure intact because it looks like someone put a lot of effort into building that. So the question is, like, how do we communicate all of this to a robot or an AI agent? And so the basic strategy so far has been to use data and feedback generated by humans to train our models. And there are several ways that models have been learning from our data. Um, so for instance, a very popular approach has been to give demonstrations. So while this approach has been pretty effective, it's hard to get humans to provide good quality, clean data. So for example, this is me struggling to demonstrate uh, how to oop, pour the red cup into the black bowl. I'm not sure why it's not playing, but trust me, I'm like struggling. So, uh, well, so this is a pretty simple task, but if we go back to our running example, this is a more realistic task that we want our robots to eventually solve. So you could similarly try to somewhat painstakingly give demos on how to clean this room, but it would definitely be harder for the average human to give uh, clean data here. So instead of providing demonstrations, there's also been a ton of work on trying to design the right reward function and then rely on algorithms like RL to find good solutions. But this approach is brittle because you can get behavior like reward hacking. Uh, and if we again go back to our realistic example, we would need to write down a reward for what good cleaning behavior looks like, which is a much more daunting task compared to simpler tasks like the boat race you just saw. And finally, humans have been giving preference data where instead of demonstrating what we want, we evaluate the output of models and then train a system to produce these human aligned outputs. And while like, this has led to great successes like ChatGPT, uh, gathering human preference data for much more complicated tasks like this one can be non-trivial. So for example, when asking a user, let's say, to choose between two ways that this room could be cleaned, it might take the user a non-trivial amount of time to evaluate both choices because the user might want to, for instance, check that all the blocks have been stored in their correct places. And so while these approaches have gotten us this far, um, as models become more capable, the types of tasks we want them to solve are going to be more complex, like this one. And the issue with this is twofold. So first, it might be difficult for humans to give good quality data in these more complex tasks. And second, as models scale, we're also going to need a lot more data. And so this approach of naively learning from human feedback that we've had might not be effective. And so I'm interested in how we can physically scale the amount of human feedback. And I'm going to look to foundation models for help, where just as we've used foundation models to assist us with easy, repetitive tasks, maybe we can sort of smartly use foundation models to assist us in giving feedback to train other agents. And so I'm really excited to share two works that look at ways in which we might do this. But first, a quick terminology clarification. So in these works, there are going to be two models. One is the learning agent that's actually being trained, and I'm going to call this agent or robot, but you can this can be a language, another large language model in practice or something like that. And then we're also going to have an off-the-shelf foundation model, something like GPT. I'm going to refer to this as LLM or VLM. And just to be clear, I'm not fine-tuning this off-the-shelf foundation model. I'm just using it for inference. Uh, oh, one more thing. Yeah, this off-the-shelf foundation model is going to help train this learning agent. OK, so let's first look at how we can scale feedback in the RL setting. So imagine your lawyer is representing you in a negotiation. And uh, let's say you're negotiating with a very important client. So you tell your lawyer that you want them to take a more compromising or versatile approach. This lawyer would pretty much know what you'd mean. But imagine now that an AI agent is your lawyer, how would you communicate what a versatile negotiator is? So normally, you'd have to design rewards or collect data, which is not scalable because they require a lot of effort. And so we're going to instead make it easier for humans to communicate their objectives by using language, using either a description of their objective or a handful of examples with a label and explanation. And I think this work is actually very similar to the previous talk that was given. So like at the high level, the idea is that we're going to use an LLM to essentially act as a reward function in an RL training loop 
so that me as the user doesn't have to design the reward by hand or provide lots of data, so we have to learn this function. So let me tell you how we do this. So we're first going to construct a prompt to feed into the language model, and our prompts loosely follow the structure, where we first have a task description, and then an example or examples from the user describing their objective. So here, this is an example negotiation where the user says that, yes, this is an example of good versatile behavior, followed by a short explanation. We then append an episode outcome from an RL training loop. Uh, this represents sort of what the RL agent has learned so far. So this is an example of a trajectory of a negotiation where Alice is the RL agent. And then we ask the LLM whether this essential, essentially this episode outcome satisfies that user's objective. So we're going to feed this prompt into an LLM during training. LLM will provide a textual output. We can prompt the LLM so that they provide this nice yes or no output. We convert that yes or no into an int and then use that as a reward signal. So in this work, we only use binary rewards. Using this reward, we perform an RL update and run another episode. And then from that, we complete the loop by summarizing the outcome of this episode as a string, and we use a handcrafted parser for that. So this red part over here is this episode summary. So that was RL training. And during evaluation, one way that we're going to evaluate this is to take our fully trained RL agent, roll out a trajectory in a test environment, and then evaluate whether that trajectory is aligned. But we're also curious, like we also want to make sure that that LLM here is outputting reasonable, good quality feedback in place of us. So we're also going to look at the LLM's labeling accuracy, which is that second arrow over here, and make sure that it, com it, it outputs reasonable things compared to some ground truth reward function. Uh, yep. You didn't just use sort of maybe like the likelihoods for yes or no as the rewards themselves? So yes, yeah, so we could have used this, but I think like back then we used Instruct DaVinci 003. We were not sure if the, cal the probabilities were well calibrated enough to be used as reward signals. Um, yeah, but I think if, if you, don't, you could use that if you don't want to use binary rewards. So quickly going back to the big picture, this work scales feedback by trying to model this human's underlying ground truth reward function using explanations and examples and crossing our fingers that this is a complete enough description of the function. So I'm going to quickly formalize our task. So this is a negotiation task. Um, so one of the agents is randomly s selected to start negotiating. Uh, sorry, before that, two agents, Alice and Bob. Bob is frozen. Alice is the learning agent. There is a set of shared items that they need to split. And each agent has their private utilities. One of the agents is randomly started to select negotiating, start negotiating. Agents don't negotiate in natural language, but in these high-level proposed tokens. So you can see that Bob here is proposing that he gets zero bucks, two hats, one ball, and Alice gets the rest of the items. So they'll continue negotiating until one of them outputs the end token. And then agents output their final proposals. If the proposals agree, then they get rewarded. If they disagree, they get zero points. So traditionally, the objective of Alice here would be to maximize her reward. But in this experiment, we want an objective where people could have diverse preferences. So instead of greedily maximizing reward, we're going to try and make Alice negotiate in different styles, versatile, pushover, competitive, and stubborn. And for these, we assumed access to ground truth reward functions just for evaluation purposes. We compare against the supervised learning baseline that is trained to predict reward signals using the exact same examples that we give to the LLM. So over here on the um, right here, the examples given to the LLM were <coughs> in-context examples. So we were able to include things like explanations in green, which is similar to chain of thought prompting. Now, when I wanted to convert these examples to training data for the SL model, I basically used the negotiation as the input. But for the label, I just use a 1 or 0 because this was a binary classifier. So you can see that one advantage of using LLMs as rewards is you can do chain of thought prompting include explanations, which gives more information. To evaluate our model, we look at labeling accuracy, which is how accurately an LLM produces reward signals with respect to some ground truth. And we also look at how uh, well aligned the fully trained RL agent is. So first, let's look at how well uh, the LLM does. So we find that an LLM can produce pretty accurate reward signals for all of our styles compared to a supervised learning model trained on the same examples. And the reason why the LLM does pretty well is because 
We use like three examples, and for the supervised learning model, these three examples are just not enough to learn a good function. Second, we also evaluate how well uh, aligned the trained RL agent is, and we compare against a third RL agent trained with the ground truth reward as well. And so, on average, we outperform our baseline by 46% and underperform the true reward by 4%. So we gather some evidence that our framework works and can train objective aligned agents. So now we ask whether we can still produce aligned agents when we don't have ground truth rewards and now when humans evaluate our agents. So we asked 10 users to select a style in which they wanted their agent to negotiate it. So they have the opportunity to come up with really creative styles where we actually, these styles can actually be very fuzzy and we don't have ground truth rewards for these, like the style ambitious. So we asked users to select three examples of the user's chosen style. So for the style ambitious, these are the three examples that this user chose. So for instance, this example, user says this is ambitious because Alice wanted her most valued item and took the risk of getting into disagreement. This is an example of ambitious behavior because Alice did not let the deal end into disagreement. This is not ambitious because she did not propose a counter offer. So with these three examples, we then used our framework to train an RL agent, but we also trained an RL agent with the, uh, to argue in the opposite style by flipping the yes or no labels in the user provided examples. And then we asked the user to rate how well each of these agents were aligned with their chosen style where the hypothesis is that that guy should be really aligned, that guy should really not be aligned. Um, and this is what we find. Uh, so higher means higher user rating of alignment. So here we gather some more evidence that we can indeed train objective aligned agents when objectives are fuzzy and they're evaluated by humans. And for the lack of time, I'm not gonna go over this qualitative example, but I, this is just to show that the resulting qualitative behavior matches the human's original explanations for what, how the agent should act. So quick example, non-ambitious behavior is when Alice does not propose a counter offer to Bob's bad offer, and that's what Alice uh, learns to do. And so we've seen one way that we can scale human feedback, which is to use an off-the-shelf LLM to quickly in context learn my preferences and then provide feedback in my stead uh, to train another agent. And I also wanna show how our work extends to robotics. So folks at Google have built on our idea where they, turn a, where they turn language commands, like do a moonwalk, into a reward function for this quadruped robot. Um, but a limitation of both this work and our work is that we both assume access to the full state information. But for an LLM to actually interact with the physical world, it will actually need to be able to see it and the objects in it. We can't always provide the full state information to the LLM. And so in our next work, we're going to look at how we can use vision language models or VLMs to do this. So I wanna come full circle and while we were not able to replicate this exact room, we made our own version of this where we have a messy child's playroom. Um, so imagine that you're now asked to clean this playroom. Within that instruction, there are a lot of implicit objectives that don't have to be explicitly mentioned that an average human would understand. So for example, when I ask you to clean the playroom, I might really mean, but don't take apart objects that look like they've been built using a lot of effort. And if you can't see well, that is a yellow model sports car built with over 500 Lego pieces that we should probably leave alone. So for today's robots, you would need to enumerate all of your implicit objectives via language or encode that information somehow in your preferences or demonstrations. And this is one reason why human specification burden can quickly become high. And so we're interested in how a robot would know that let's say these blocks in the front are okay to clean up, maybe these blocks are okay too, but that it shouldn't touch the set of blocks on that car without querying humans. So going back to the big picture, how does this work aim to scale feedback? So say this is the space of all objective functions a user may have. The first work was about modeling a specific function in the space using examples and explanations. And this work, given some high level objective like clean the room, we're gonna leave open exactly how to accomplish this. So this means you have many functions you could choose from. But as humans, we usually have good priors over functions and choose functions based off of social norms or common sense reasoning. Um, and so the goal of this work is to similarly equip this common sense prior with robots so they can act reasonably in the absence of specific preference information. And I'm going to sort of quickly outline how we do this. Um, 
And maybe in the interest of time, I'm going to skip over. I've sort of built it up here. Um, let's see. OK, maybe I can start here. So we're going to use a vision language model and a LLM to help decide how to clean up this playroom. So maybe with the instruction, clean the desk, VLM will describe the scene. It may say that there is a car. That's not enough information for the LLM to come up with a reasonable action plan. So we're going to ask the LLM to ask the VLM a follow-up question about the object. For instance, is the car made out of Legos? Now to really see, you can see that car is a little occluded. So in order to deal with occlusions, we're going to have a robot go and actively gather this missing information by taking close-up photos of the object in question. We want to take, uh, have the robot take informative close-up photos. For example, to see what's, whether that mug is empty, we'd want to take a top-down photo instead of a photo from the side. And we're going to determine informativeness using a language model. And I know this is kind of a heuristic method because they don't have visual information, or at least they did not until now. Um, but this was a good enough heuristic that worked, and it was a simple thing to try, so we just kept it. So we take the close-up photo, we ask the VLM this follow-up question, and then we add this new information to our context. And you can sort of iterate this, and this is a way of extracting more targeted, relevant information from the VLM. So you can do this multiple times. Once you have enough information, you can then ask the LLM to choose an appropriate way to clean up the car. Um, and for evaluation, we collected a data set uh, and also evaluated our framework on two surfaces. But for time, let me just show you the sort of qualitative flashy video. So this is how the robot uses our framework to decide to clean up this playroom, all without querying a human. So it chooses to leave that sports car and this toy train set alone. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was a hard manipulation problem. Um, this is a kitchen environment. So it chooses to leave this unopened can of yerba mate alone instead of throwing it away in case someone else may want to drink it. Um, yeah, and so I wanted to wrap this section up by highlighting the key message and just sort of hit uh, the main message was that we can use foundation models to scale human feedback. Um, yeah, and I'd love any questions or comments that you have. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I'm curious about the choice of language models. Like you have an off-the-shelf and one and the agent one. So I wonder if the off-the-shelf one should be kind of strong mm -hmm. so that it can give effective feedback to train as a reward for the agent model. Like we have a GPT-4 as a off-the-shelf model. And then we, we just train a smaller one, like a GPT-3.5 turbo, so as to train it more efficiently as agent, right? Yeah, I think this is a great question. Um, in our practice, we use stronger models for the critique model, like GPT-4, to give feedback. But in practice, I think this, the answer to this is unclear. And it's probably going to depend on your task. Because in some tasks, giving feedback is the easier job. So you don't need as good of a model. In some tasks, maybe the task of actually performing the task, like the learning agent's job, is hard. So you need a really strong model for that. So it, it'll depend. Yeah, yeah, that's a key information. Yeah, and I wonder if you can, if you choose by the human intuitives when you're doing tasks, like if the uh, agent is not strong enough, so, so we use a, a like stronger, uh, strong off-the-shelf model so to, to boost, or do you have this um, automatic selection uh, pipeline in this loop? Uh, so you just choose it uh, intuitively for the off-the-shelf model. Um, I don't think I understood your question, but I'd be happy to take it offline oh, in case of time. Yeah.